All right, so hello everybody. Welcome to today's lecture. Today we have a lot of friends from, um, I don't know, Elite Intellect and IFNG. They've combined themselves together and formed 80 people in our live stream today. And we are going to be graced again by the presence of our mother dearest from Elite Intellect 9.0. They were going to talk about what? Speaking. Task one and task two, I'm not sure. I just saw it in the picture, but there you go. <laughs> and without further ado, this is going, This is our lecturer, Mother Dearest, Mother Dragon. She will introduce herself to us um, many ways than none. Oh, many ways. Okay. So floor is yours, Mother Dearest. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Sir Manuel. Yeah. So good evening, everyone here in the Philippines. Good afternoon. And of course, good, good afternoon for those of you in, uh, in, the, in, in another country. Okay. And of course, for those of you guys in the US, good morning, everyone. Welcome back to our discussion here at IELTS Filipino Nurses Group. And of course, guys, today we are going to be discussing to you guys about the IELTS speaking examinations, particularly the part one and the part two, because you know what? I have promised you, my children, that I will be teaching you techniques part per part right so this week we will be discussing about part one and part two and then the following week we're going to be discussing about the follow-up round and of course the part three and of course like what we did last speaking week sir manuel again will be my examiner and then i will be the examinee bet mo yon, sir manuel <laughs> okay let me just post this one okay hold on guys Alrighty. Okay. <clears throat> so guys, let me ask you something. If you're going to be gauging, okay, your IELTS potential at the moment, okay, I want you guys to answer honestly. If you are on Facebook or at Zoom, okay, if you are going to be gauging your IELTS um, capacity or skills at the moment, where would it be? Are you at the beginner, intermediate, or advanced level? Okay. Again, are you at the beginner, intermediate, intermediate or advanced level okay come on type in your answers right there i want to pick your brain for tonight before we start our discussion for today okay thank you so much for the honesty there you go so for christelle beginner donna is a beginner shane beginner okay um renato sheila beginner 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 yeah okay that's okay guys novice sorry okay novice i surmise beginner <laughs> yeah beginner yes guys it's okay it's okay for, for you guys to be a beginner when it comes to your speaking examination because at the end of the day you will not get to intermediate and advanced if you are not if you did not surpass the beginner stage okay sir um, how would you categorize the preparation of the people when it comes to the IELTS? How would you consider them as beginners? Okay, you can be considered as beginner if, um, let's say, if you're on the first stages of your review, you're just getting the concept of the IELTS itself, then basically you're already considered as a beginner, okay? And then if you have already taken the IELTS before, but unfortunately failed, then of course you can be considered as your intermediate or you're already on your review for let's say three months or four months and you're already on the intermediate level. Advanced level, on the other hand, these are the students who are who knows the concept, who know the concept inside and out, they can perform pretty well on their speaking and their writing. And of course, whatever question you ask them, they can actually answer, okay? So those are the staging, okay? Actually here, I categorize my students always for me to know, okay, what are, <clears throat> or what I am working with, okay? So that is a secret, is for you to categorize yourself, whether you're a beginner, intermediate student, or an advanced level student, okay? But then again, we also have a lot of advanced students in the audience right now. They are just modest, right? They, do, they just don't want to say that they are advanced, okay? So, <clears throat> Vinegar, Mama, good evening. <laughs> Ray, Ray, Vinegar. Okay, guys, so welcome back to another fun and informative discussion about the IELTS speaking. One of your favorite subtests on the examination itself is the speaking examination brought to you by IELTS Filipino Nurses Group and, of course, Elite Intellect 9. If it's your first time to join us in our live discussion for tonight, allow me to introduce myself formally to you guys. I am pleased to meet you. My name is Clint Joseph Tyler, the security guard of Elite Intellect IELTS OET and Plex and CBD. <laughs> Specialist PH. 
security guard. The security guard of Elite Intellect. Now, I am the founder of Elite Intellect, IELTS OET, Antex, and CBT Specialist PH. I am an IELTS expert for the past 12 years. Okay, also known as your Mother Dragon, Mama Dragon, Mama D, Mother D, Hap Pilipino, Hap Maria Labo. <laughs> <laughs> who, who here knows Maria Labo? Who here knows Maria Labo? <clears throat> oh my gosh. <laughs> who here knows Maria Labo? Okay. All right. For those of you guys who do not know, yeah, Maria Labo is like an urban, I don't know if that's a true to life story or an urban legend along Visayas region, right? She, she She's the one, she's like the slit mouthed woman. <laughs> Right? That's Maria Labo. <laughs> okay, hold on. Okay, let's just take a look at our, um, um, what do you call this? Sir Manuel, could you please check our comment section on Facebook? I think <clears throat> there are some spammers again there. Uh, license certificate IELTS by just paying something. You will get IELTS something. Please report the comment right there because there's no such thing as you're going to uh, buy your IELTS certificate. Okay. <laughs> You know Maria Labo, right? <laughs> so I am half Filipino, half Maria Labo. Okay, so all right, so our hashtag for tonight on Facebook is hashtag Mama D cares. Alagang ina, kwentong ina, turong ina, tawang ina, matutoka ina ka. <laughs> So don't forget to type hashtag Mama D cares on your comment section right there on Facebook. Okay, guys. So let me just say hello to our 100 participants at Zoom and 142 participants at Facebook. Okay. Gusto nyo yun, di ba? Umpisa pa lang. May pasabog na ako agad. Hap Pilipino, hap Maria Labo. You know, when I was younger, I was really scared of Maria Labo because... Our, my, my, my cousin, who's taking care of me when I was younger, is from Visaya. So she always scares me that Maria Labo will actually come and get me. So if you do not know who Maria Labo is, research later. <laughs> Panakot ng ano yan. <laughs> si Maria Labo. Hello, Victoria Ramones, my love. Okay, so before we begin, guys, a message of love first. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for His compassions never fail. They are new every mor morning. Great is your faithfulness. Okay, one. this is from the book of Lamentations, chapter 3, verse 22 to 23. Guys, know that every single day, the love of the Lord is renewed, okay? The moment that you sleep while you're sleeping and the moment that you wake up, the love and compassion of the Lord never fails to guide you. So guys, okay, one thing's for sure is that whatever it is, wherever you are the lord loves us okay so let's start with our discussion for tonight i will be teaching you guys techniques okay that you may apply for your speaking part one and your speaking part two especially the speaking part two because okay let's be honest let's cut to the chase here who among you maria labo from antique there you go who among you here guys who among you here find it difficult to reach the two minutes time Okay, for you to talk on the part two, who among you find it difficult for you to reach the two minutes time to talk on the speaking part two? I mean, everyone, everyone struggles, okay, or everyone may have a struggle when it comes to reaching the two minutes time for you to talk on the exam. Now, Good news for you guys for today is I will be teaching you techniques, okay? Update, we have 171 viewers on Facebook and of course, 100 viewers at Zoom, okay? Hello, Mama D. Hello, Fatima, my love. There you go, all of the above, sir, okay? So, this later on, I will be teaching you guys on how can you reach that two minutes time for you to talk effortlessly, okay? This is a technique that I teach my students all the time for them to reach the two minutes as if they are not on the examination. They can reach the two minutes without even exerting too much effort and of course taking care of their scores, all right? And they can also take care of their scores. So let us learn fun and systematic techniques to make your IELTS speaking task one and task two easy. That's a promise, okay? So let's start, guys, all right? So first things first, <clears throat> Fact check, okay? Fact check, okay? So when you are preparing for the IELTS examination, this is what I would want you guys to do. Look forward to the examination, but do not think ahead. 
Okay? Because some students, they have a tendency to look beyond their capacity on the exam. They tend to overthink the outcome of the exam. Guys, it's an interview. The only thing that you have to do is to answer. Okay? Again, it's an academic interview. The only thing that you have to do is to answer systematically, utilize your academic words, and of course, answer the questions of the examiner. When you are asked the question, always ask yourself, hmm, how can I relate this to my experience? Okay? When you are asked the question, on the speaking examination on the IELTS, you always have to ask yourself, how can I relate this to myself, okay? I mean, it's easier for me to talk about my experience rather than the experience of others, like the experience of Ray Ray, Sir Manuel, Sir Jeff, there you go. It's difficult for me to talk about their experience because I have limited knowledge about their experiences. So on the examination, if I will be asked the question, I will be directly relating it to myself for me to, for me to make it easier or bearable for me to detail on the test. Now, <clears throat> it is virtually impossible for you not to have an idea about the IELTS questions because as I always tell my students, guys, um, the IELTS examinations are, uh, the IELTS examination questions are generalized in knowledge, okay? You will not be asked questions there like, how, how diamonds are made. Could you please describe... <clears throat> Could you please describe the, 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 the process of condensation? I mean, they're not going to be asking you that on the exam. Okay, like let's say economical growth, right? I mean, you will not be asked that on the examination. It is always general when it comes to knowledge, okay? The most difficult thing that you might encounter when it comes to the question is, let's say, the economical growth of your country for the past 10 years, right? So is it, is, it, is it growing? Is it stagnant? Did it decline over time? So that's the most difficult thing that you might be asked on the examination. So you have to calm down. <clears throat> okay. Hi. Hello, Rika. Rika and Ditya. Hello. Hello. So you have to calm down on the exam. Okay. Update, guys. 200 Facebook viewers and 100 Zoom participants, making that a total of 300 viewers for tonight. Okay. Let's make this 1,800. Hello? <laughs> okay so what else okay what else is another thing i'm visible so yes june you're visible my love okay hello alfred my love all right so next one hello ryan co ryan co hello there you go remember to answer calmly and naturally on the exam the more you force it the more you will get a lower score you know i always abide by this law, okay? On the examination, if you are asked the question, you try to answer it as calmly as possible and, of course, as naturally as you can. Because when you are forcing it, then, of course, there will be a huge problem when it comes to your scores on the exam. Believe me, an English conversation on the IELTS exam does not denote forced English. It should be natural. That is why I, don't, I do not recommend my students to learn accents on the exam because sometimes when you are using too much accent on the test you're you're you might actually sound forced okay i'm going to give you an illustration okay first things first let's talk about the forced way of answering okay <clears throat> let's say we're asked what is an activity that you love doing in the afternoon okay force <clears throat> sorry pardon me excuse uh please uh be careful with your ears okay <laughs> All right. Fourth, <clears throat> well, there are a lot of things that I tend to do, especially when I'm not doing anything, because every time that I am bored, what I do is I read books. I mean, that's like too throaty, too nosy, too everything, right? It's too forced. It's too irritating, right? When you are answering on the exam, you have to sound natural, okay? Well, there are a lot of things that I enjoy, especially when I'm bored, but particularly I love reading books, right? I'd rather you have no accent at all on the exam if it will make you sound natural, okay? The common misinterpretation of the students when it comes to the IELTS speaking is you have to have good accent. No, you just have to sound neutral, okay? The one that I'm using right now is the neutral accent. I don't use American accent. I don't use British accent. It's the neutral accent. And you can understand every single thing that I am saying, right? So same goes on the exam, okay? If you are asked the question, what I want you guys to remember is that don't force the accent. Don't force the pronunciation. You have to sound natural, okay? All right. <clears throat> 
Hello, Mama D. Resuming learning from Riyadh. Hello, Rodora, my love. All righty. So, ooh, 226 viewers on Facebook and 100 viewers at Zoom. Okay, next one. Sometimes you know what to say, okay, but you do not know how to say it. <laughs> Who here encounters that? Right? In Tagalog, we call it, alam mo kung anong gusto mong sabihin, kaya lang hindi mo alam kung papaano mong sabihin. Right? On our language, we say, nose mo sit, kung anitang bet mong ituks, kaya lang, we titit mo nose trucks, kung papaano mo i-spluk, sir. <laughs> right? On the exam, <clears throat> Sometimes it's quite difficult for you to come up with ideas. Okay, you know what? You know, you know, you you know that you you have an idea about it. But then again, with the titmo knows kung paano mo i-spluk side, the best. So kapag gagani elt, yun ang yari mga junakias. Sorry. <laughs> if that happens on the exam, what I would want you to remember is for you to be selective. Okay. The common problem why the students find it difficult to express what they're thinking of on the exam is that they have too many ideas, okay? When you have too many ideas, it would be quite onerous for you to think, okay? Or to be selective with one. Um, last Monday, I think that was Tuesday, right? Tuesday, I taught my Ordaneta students on how to select proper ideas okay the proper ideas would be not your first idea but because that is your reactive thought okay the best ideas on the exam is either your second idea or your third idea okay all right ganun kaya ako magturo ng ano no? <laughs> ng IELTS Okay, guilty here. That's why I have a lot of ums and dead air. Oh, yeah, Tessa, yeah. Sometimes it could actually cause students to have ums and dead air on the exam. Okay? All right. So, guys, not all that comes into your mind should be answered on the test. Okay? All right. <laughs> True legend, collagen, corrected by Plangak, di ba? Oh, my gosh. Ano pa ba? Uh, <clears throat> Channeling Boom Boom Kylie, Kylie Minog Saison, Saison Balot Nunez Charot. Sir, what does that mean? Yes. <laughs> Apakahaba, Sir Joseph? Yes lang ang ibig sabihin. Oo. Diba? Channeling Boom Boom Kylie, Kylie Minog Saison, Saison Balot Nunez Charot. <laughs> what does that mean? Yes. Diba? Okay. <clears throat> so, what causes the students to fail on the test? Okay, let's talk about this one. Why do students fail on the IELTS speaking examination? Basically, first is overthinking. <laughs> when you love overthinking things, guys, believe me, the IELTS is not for you. Okay, believe me. I have been on the IELTS industry for 12 years now. Okay, and Based on my observation, the students who tend to overthink too much on their exam, they tend not to get their target scores. But then again, the students who are chill, rock on, let's do this, rock and roll to the world, right? Those students who would be, um, who would be not overthinking their performance, they tend to get higher scores. So why do you think is that? It's because when you are overthinking, it would be quite difficult for you to come up with proper responses because you are overanalyzing the things in your head, right? So just answer the questions, expand your answers, and use academic words. That's basically it, okay? Next one, you care too much if your examiner likes you, okay? Guys. Again, you should not care if your examiner likes you or not. Again, it's not on their job description for them to like you, okay? Their main responsibility is to grade you on the exam. That's basically it, okay? It's not their responsibility to like you or to not like you on the exam. So don't care too much if they like you. What you can do is you may choose to like them. Okay. Oh, I like this examiner. There you go. Okay. What else? Not sensitive enough with errors. Like every time that you commit an error on the speaking examination, you just let it slide by. Like it's not a big deal at all. Like it's not a grammatical error. So if that happens, guys, if you commit an error on the exam, what, what, what is always effective is for you guys to, let's say, correct it immediately. Okay, you can correct it by saying rather what I meant was or shall I say, okay? Let's say you, you had the pronunciation error, okay? 
<clears throat> okay. Let's say um, you're trying to say, well, I am usually confused. What I meant was confused. There you go. I, I, I am usually confused. What I meant was confused. There you go. Or shall I say confused? So every time that you commit an error on the examination, you try to catch it and then correct it so that your examiner knows that you are quite aware when it comes to your linguistic features. Okay. Next one, not organizing their thoughts. Okay. Too many students are, yeah, you have to turn around real quick when that happens. Some students, they tend not to be sensitive with the way that they organize their ideas. They just, they, they're just there to answer and you're done, right? I mean, what can you say about children learning um, earlier, like four years old, right? And then, oh, it's a good thing. Like, um, for example, when they learn early, they can actually become um, more aware of their environment. I mean, look at that answer right there. Um, first error there is I use the word for example to explain my answer. And then the second one, guys, is that I said they should be aware of their environment. What's the connection of environment with learning, right? So basically, it's a completely different thing. Right? So you have to organize your answer so as to ensure that you're going to have a clear delivery with your examiner. Okay? Bet, bet on Bethlehem, carry boom boom, claro. Chat na boom boom, Kylie, Kylie minok sa ison, sa ison balatunya sa charot. Okay. Carry, carry boom. Moving on. <laughs> okay. What else? <clears throat> Not expanding your answers. Basically, you're answering one sentence answers to your examiners. Guys, believe me, one sentence would not be enough, okay, for you to show your grammatical and vocabulary and fluency and pronunciation capacity. Okay, carry boom, sabi ni Arlene, the bees, the bees backs, no smooth one. <laughs> okay. When we say expanding, guys, okay, one sentence would not be enough, okay? Let's say you were asked, do you like reading? And then you said, yes, I like reading. I mean, hello. Okay, next one. Not preparing enough, okay? Some students, they think like this, okay? Oh, it's just an English test. So I'm not going to prepare too much because I'm already good when it comes to speaking in English. So I will just prepare for one week. And then <laughs> in comes the examination, they will encounter culture shock, right? They'll be like, oh my gosh, I wish I had prepared in the first place, girl. It's not an exam. It's, uh, it's an insidious uh, entity. <laughs> okay, so guys, not preparing enough. You have to prepare enough, okay? Sir, how will I know if my preparation is enough? Okay, this is what is a good signifier. How will I know? How will you know if your preparation is enough, okay? First is, you don't have a doubt anymore. Again, you don't have a doubt anymore, okay? You don't have doubts or a doubt, okay, that you will be able to pass the exam. Now, if you're already on that stage, you feel confident, happy with your performances, happy with your practice tests, happy with your mock examinations, and you feel like you can actually pass the exam, then of course, by all means, go and take it. However, if you have an inch of a doubt, that's a millimeter, Sir Joseph, okay. If you have an inch of a doubt, okay, don't take the exam just yet, okay? Do not take it yet, okay? Now, Another thing is preparing too much. <laughs> okay, when I say preparing too much, it's not the length of your preparation, okay? That I mean by this one. What I mean by this one is you can no, you can no longer function and get the concept because you are there overthinking the lessons. You're there overthinking the words. You're there overthinking the answers. You are there overthinking things. So yeah, that's not actually effective too, right? Okay, another one, okay, is when you have limited knowledge, I want you to search for these things later on, okay? This is where I get my ideas from. Number one, Nat Geo, TED Talks, TED Ed, CNN, TEDx, BBC, and Magandang Buhay. Charing. <laughs> Take out Magandang Buhay. It's not English, okay? <laughs> 
although I love magandang buhay. Hi, mom si Jules, mom si Mills, and mom si Reg. Dibis? Okay. So yeah, guys, if you have limited knowledge, you may watch Nat Geo, TED Talks, TED Ed, CNN, TEDx, and BBC. Okay? BBC, especially in CNN, for the latest news and events. Okay? Because guys, believe me when I tell you that you need to know the latest news and events on the exam. Because what if they ask you about the current news and events? And then you said, okay, um, so what can you say about the current news and events in your country? Oh, yes, the current events in my country. You know, it's good and it's bad at the same time. The current event that I know is Typhoon Ondoy. Diyos ko! Anak, napakatagal na ng Ondoy. Right? What are the recent news? What, what's the recent news right now? Come on. What's the recent news right now? Okay, punishment for the hit and run case. What else? Um, the volcanoes are on alert level one and two. What else? COVID is uh, slowing down in the Philippines. What else? Um, Joseph is a virgin and will always be a virgin. There you go. So those are the current news and events right now. Right? So you have to know. Okay? You have to know. Yeah. You have to know the current news and events. Okay? Because sometimes they're going to be asking you on the exam. Okay? Sabi ni Mark, ayan na si Rupa. Hello. Kumusta ka naman dyan? Keri ka ba be? <laughs> okay. Scastically <coughs> being bashed in Aurora 2022. Increase in fuel prices. Yes. Wag na lang magkotse, magbike na lang po ang lahat. Yeah, Moira separation. There you go. Okay, yeah. So you have to know the current news and events, guys. Okay, what else? The 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 reason um economic news. Okay, the re the reason economic news. Okay, there you go. So you have to know them. So go for BBC and CNN, right? Uh, I mean for news and events, number one right now is GMA Network. Number two is Manila Bulletin, I think, and number three is um. Daily Inquirer. I'm not sure. Okay. Or Daily Inquirer is number two. Number two, inflation around the world, right? Due to the due to the war. Okay, there you go. And the increase in fuel price. Okay. So are you ready to learn about the techniques on your part one? Yes, intro palang po yon. <laughs> <clears throat> All the things that I have said are just introductions, okay? So kung carry mo pa at bet mo pa, type Bethlehem. All right. <clears throat> so let's now talk about the techniques for your speaking part one, okay? What are the things that you can do, okay, when it comes to the speaking part one of the IELTS examination. Philippine peso went down, meaning the economy is plummeting. One dollar is 53.4 plus. Yeah. Okay. Oh my gosh. Ang taas ng dolyar ngayon, ha? Sosyal. All right. Sa so, mga nasa US, be kind of mean. <laughs> okay. So, let's take a look at the brief of the task one. Okay. Basically, on the speaking part one, you will be asked three to five questions. Okay. Sometimes five, sometimes six, sometimes seven. Okay. Sir, why is it arranged? There's no particular fixed number of questions per student. Basically, guys, one thing that you would need to remember is the number of questions will depend on your examiner or on your performance. So, Sir Joseph, it means that when I'm doing well, you will be asked short, um, let's say, three questions or four questions only, okay? If you are asked three or four questions only on the exam, it means that you are doing well, okay? But, God forbid that you're on the part one and then the examiner is already asking you 15 questions, it means, my love, that you're not performing practically well, okay? Okay? If the examiners have too much questions, it means that they're giving you chances, okay? And that's not a good thing, okay? It's not a good thing. Wititit carry best yung ganet chiwa manaywa. Kasi nga kapag ganelbs yung tring. That's not that what you call this, it's not going to work, okay? When the examiner is asking you too much questions, it means that you're not performing on their expectation because they, they are giving you chances by asking you more questions. So yeah, be careful with that one, okay? The less questions you'll be asked, the better grades, okay? All right, so all the questions will be based on your beliefs, 
preferences, own experience, anything that is related to yourself, okay? Are the questions on your part one related to me? Yes or no? Are the questions on the part one related to me? Hi, girly. Oh, Marl is watching. Hello, Marl. Are the questions of the exam related to me? No, it's related to you, right? Like, let's say, what are the things that you like doing in the afternoon? What can you do to support your family more? What are the things that you... Okay, it's about you, okay? Not about me, okay? On the exam, it's all about you, okay? So you better relate it to yourself, okay? So things to remember, do not beat around the bush, okay? Because some students, when they are asked a question on the part one, they tend to go around in circles. Let's say, <clears throat> what is your favorite food is the question as basic as that, okay? What is your favorite food? And the student will say, well, there are a lot of food choices in the Philippines, given that we were colonized by the Spaniards and we were we were actually uh, we were actually inspired by different types of cultures, not just the Spaniards, but of course the Americans. Nowadays, it is the Japanese and of course the Korean culture which inspires the Philippines when it comes to food. Hindi mo na nasagot ko ano yung favorite food mo sa kakaispa Spaniard, US US, Canada Canada, UK UK, Japan Japan Korea mo, right? So you would need to answer the question directly. Don't beat around the bush. What is your favorite food? Right? I love eating birds. <laughs> what? Chicken is a bird. So I love fried chicken. Okay? I love eating fried chicken. Okay? So if you would want to say fried, fried chicken, go for it. Sir, I have a question. My favorite food is sinigang samiso. <laughs> My favorite food is sinigang samiso. May I answer that on the exam? Can I say I love eating sinigang samiso? No, okay? Because number one, sinigang is not in English. Miso is also not in English, right? So you could just say tamarind-based soup. There you go. Meat braised in tamarind-based soup. Okay, so paki-English, no? Okay, so exam. Okay, sir, what about adobo? Is adobo already acceptable on the English language? Yeah, because technically it's the... It's, it's the conventional and traditional dish of a country. So you can say adobo. But what I would recommend for you guys, if you're asked a question like that, is to try to avoid Filipino words or native words, okay? Let's say you were asked, <clears throat> what is your favorite drink in your country? Eh, nagkataon, you live in Somalia, somewhere there, right? Oh, I love... Brrr, brrr, brrr. Eh, your examiner will not understand that, Right? So you would need to answer them in English. So try to avoid words which are in vernacular. Okay? In Tagalog, pakiiwasan ang mga salita na nasa lokal na lingwahe. Okay? Try to avoid words which are on local language. Okay? In the Philippines, we have, uh, uh, we have common words like barangay, barangay chairman. There you go. The only English word there is the word chairman. But then again, not the barangay. Plaza is not plaza. Plaza is not in English. Okay? You can say park. Okay? Sushi is technically acceptable like adobo. Right? So you can say sushi. I love sushi specifically. Uh, raw salmon, which we call, which they call sashimi in Japanese. Wherein I can eat three kilos of that one easily. Don't dare me. <laughs> I love sashimi, guys. Believe me. Salmon, tuna, um, <clears throat> sea urchin, err, squid sashimi, anything that is raw. <clears throat> I'm sorry for my throat. There's thunder inside. Anything that is raw, I love putting it in my mouth. <laughs> okay. What else? Um, go direct to the point with your answers. If you have time, 
Okay? If you still have time, not required on all the questions, but if you still have time, you may give examples to your examiners. After your answer, after you explained your answer, you may give them examples. Sir Joseph, what are the types of examples that I may utilize? Okay? So you may use your experience, something that is specific, people, tradition, your local community, your observation, a person, or a country. There you go. So you may use examples too to supplement your details on the exam, okay? <clears throat> chicken curry is already accepted. Yeah, curry, chicken curry. There you go. I think it would be accepted on the exam because it's a, what do you call this? It's like adobo. It's a popular food or traditional or conventional food, right? Food, food like that, you may say that. However, food like you cannot answer that on the exam. Right? Bigger light tea. <laughs> Sir, what? Bigger light tea. Okay. <clears throat> uh, I mean, when bigger lie was quiet, caldereta is not in English, Clarissa, my love. It's in, it's in Spanish, right? Caldereta. It's like menudo. It's like chicharron, okay? These are not in English. They are in Spanish. So uh, to try to avoid these types of food. Okay, you can just say beef stew, okay? Beef stew is acceptable, okay? Anong pwedeng term for barangay, mama di neighborhood? Okay. Oh my gosh, Sir Joseph, that's the English of barangay? Yeah. <laughs> the English of barangay is either your local community or the neighborhood. Okay, that's barangay. Okay, neighborhood or local community. There you go. What about kushari, a traditional Egyptian food? Well, if it's popular, you can say it. But if ever you're going to be using it, I would rather you explain what it is. Okay, I am a type of person who loves eating kushari, which is a traditional Egyptian food. It is made of and cooked with, uh, served with something, and we eat it during kemet. Something, yung mga ganes be, okay? You may say that too, okay? Mahatahun. All right. <clears throat> Akala ko kapitbahay yun, neighbor yon Yung barangay, neighborhood. Okay? All right. So, another. Okay? It is okay if the examiner interrupts you. Okay? And a lot of students are mortified of this idea. Okay? A lot of students are mortified of this idea that when they are speaking on the exam, the examiners would suddenly say, okay, moving on to the next question, okay? Or that's it, okay? Moving on to the next question. It's totally fine if your examiner does that, okay? You don't have to be bothered. You don't have to be afraid. Y'all don't have to be, uh, what do you call this? You don't have to be scared of the idea that your examiner is interrupting you because what it means is that they already heard what they needed to hear. So basically, it's time for them to move on to the next question. It's not a bad thing if your examiner interrupts you. I know some examiners that you're just on the second sentence of your delivery, they will interrupt you. But then again, in comes your score, you are at 7.5 or an 8.0. It means that they have heard your capacity. It's time for them to test you on another type of question. Okay? So don't be afraid. Wa kayong masyoko to yung examiner mess, e pinipigilan kang ganek na pumluks. Kasi kapag wa, tiyari. Don't be afraid if your examiner is trying to, is interrupting you, okay? It means that they have already, they got your point. They know that you can relate to the question. So it's time for them to test you on another question, okay? Detailing matters. Do not give the examiner short responses. Sir, what would you recommend? How long should I be answering on the test, okay? So short answers are two to three sentences. Again, Short answers are two to three sentences, which is 15 to 30 seconds, okay? Long answers are four to six sentences, which is 40 seconds to a minute, okay? 40 seconds to a minute. On the examination, guys, what I would want you to remember is it should be a combination of short answers and long answers answers. Because naturally, when you are on a conversation, there are topics that you are interested with, right? If you're interested with a topic, then 
you can give them long answers, right? I mean, I'm interested in all the long things, you know? <laughs> If you are interested on the question itself, you may give them a long answer, okay? All right, but if you're not that interested with the question, let's say you, you cannot relate as much, okay, with the question, so you can give them short answers, okay? So on the exam, it should be a combination of short and long answers. <laughs> I love long and short things. Okay. So what else? All right. Another thing to remember, do not repeat your main point over and over and over and over and over again. Okay. Because some of the students, they tend to forget their answer. Okay. I, have you experienced this before? You're answering and then you're already explaining and then you forgot your answer. <laughs> Or you even forgot what you're already, what you're explaining. Who here experienced that before? I know I did. I did. I remember this one when Sir Jeff played as my examiner on a live here at IFNG. And then I, okay, played as an examinee. And then he was asking me a question. And then I forgot the question. Really? I forgot in the middle of the delivery. Okay. So yeah, don't repeat main points like that. Because when you're repeating main points, there's a tendency for you to forget what you're talking about. Okay. So give only one central topic. Focus on that. Okay, do not give many ideas per question. Let's say you were asked by your examiner, what is an activity that you love doing in the afternoon? Okay, the question itself says it all. What is an activity? So it's just asking you about one activity. Okay, so you can say, well, I love collect. I love looking at my voodoo doll collection. There you go. So you expand on that. Okay? You expand on that. You expand on your voodoo doll collection while you love looking at them. Okay? All right. Because some of the students, oh, in the afternoon, I love reading. And then after reading, I love eating. After eating, I love sleeping. Basically, everything that has an ING, I love doing in the afternoon, including dancing, singing, uh, teaching, all verbs, you know? Some students, they tend to do that because they think that it will make their answer longer. Nah, -uh -uh, girl, yeah, better not do that on the exam, okay? On the exam, if you are asked the question, what is an activity, then you better be giving them an activity, not activities, okay? So what else? Be conversational, okay? When we say conversational, guys, mangkukulam pala. <laughs> When I'm bored, I love looking at my collection of different needle sizes, you know? And I also have a collection of dolls, different shapes and sizes of dolls. Sometimes they have hair. <laughs> okay, so to be conversational, okay? When we say conversational, guys, do not sound robotic. Okay, sir, so what's robotic sounding? Okay, listen, listen carefully. There are multiparious things that I enjoy in our local community, specifically those things that could be beneficial for the people. You know, I am a type of person who is, you know, isang paalala, hindi gamot, hindi dapat gamitin gamot sa mga uri ng sakit. Ang susunod na programa ay rated SPG is strict tong patnubay at gabay na mga gulang kailangan sa mga baklang nanonood. Right? So, when you sound like that on the exam, believe me, it makes you sound robotic right it makes you sound so robotic whereas forced on the other hand is quite different too okay sir how to sound forced on the exam okay listen <clears throat> there are multifarious things that i enjoy in our local community especially those things that could be beneficial because i know i myself love <laughs> love to do these things you know if i am bored what i do is go banat na banat diba okay so yeah you have to make use very good michael make mike you have to make use of your intonation patterns okay there are a lot of things that i enjoy in our local community specifically those things that could be beneficial for the people When I am not doing anything, I do love going and continuing my philanthropic work. So look at that, right? You sound as if you're conversing 
with the person in front of you rather than scaring them like a tik tik ik ik lahat na nang uri ng um, humahaba ang dila abwak ng mga ganyan sigbin <laughs> and of course Maria Labo okay So be careful, okay? You have to sound natural, not force on the exam, okay? So Sir Joseph, what else? All right. Do look at sample IELTS questions, okay? Again, we recommend for you to use the app, okay? You can look at sample IELTS questions. What I do not recommend for you to do is to look at sample answers. It's enough for you guys to look at the questions. That's basically it, okay? Look at the questions. Try to study the questions, okay? Look at the type of questions that you might be asked, but do not look at the answers, okay? So why? Why should I not be looking on the answer? Because there's a problem that you might actually memorize it, okay? Never memorize an IELTS response. That is a huge deduction on your end if you're memorizing things on the exam. Never pattern it to sample answers because it will sound memorized and unnatural. And apart from that, you just have to go with the flow and formulate on your own answer on the test. Because some students, yeah, unfortunately, they tend to memorize answers. Yeah, in Tagalog, we call it so placado. Like my makeup today, it's so placado, right? Wow, placado. Yes, I have pores. Yesterday. Now it's gone. <laughs> do not do not do not sound too perfect on the exam. I would say too perfect. Because if you sound too perfect, there's a tendency that you might have been memorizing the answer or you might have been um applying a pattern on the answer. So yeah, if you're going to be incorporating answers on the test, you have to sound naturally. Okay, so you have to, I mean, if you have to sound excited, oh, yes, I was practically excited about that because I've worked a lot in the slums of Tondo, Manila, and the life there is just poor, and it's very sad, but I've taught myself to see situations with a silver lining, right? Look at that. It is, it is not memorized, right? It's, it's using the intonations, right? There are a I worked a lot in the slums of Tondo, Manila because the life there is just poor and it's very sad. But I've taught myself to see situations with a silver lining. Woo! <laughs> ano kaya kung ganun ka sumagutan? Manulo ka siguro yung examiner sa'yo. Mga anak, sino dito yung poor lang yung target? Okay, 3.5. Pakigawa ka nga. Sorry nga. <laughs> What is an activity that you love doing in the afternoon? When I'm not doing anything, it means that I'm not doing anything. <laughs> okay, so guys, again, avoid memorized responses on the exam. Okay? You may look at IELTS questions again. Okay? You may look at IELTS questions again. But then again, please make sure that you're look, not looking at the sample answers because the tendency is you might sound memorized on the test. Okay? Claro bunga? All right. So let me just get water real quick. Give me three minutes to do this. But while I'm doing that, let me call on Ati Genji, our, our, one of our tenured coaches in your IT intellect, to give you some tips okay, that you may apply on your speaking examination. There you go. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Mother D. Okay. Uh, I would like to say hello to the 265 FB viewers right now and to our Zoom participants, 99 Zoom participants. So welcome to Elite, uh, to IFNG and Elite uh, Master uh, Class tonight. Well, um, do I need to say more? Because Mother D has already given us all the tips. But what, <laughs> uh, hi, Ray, what I can give you right now is that when Mother D would uh, send this, um, uh, what's this, this PowerPoint or this uh, notes, please ask from the IFNG admins because if you can uh, bring or if you can um, look at the the tips that Mother D gave us uh, right now, all the tips that uh, 
uh, he has been discussing a while ago, then please do take note of all of those tips because those are the things that are that will be helping you uh, ace that examination. I don't need to say anything because Mother D has already uh, mentioned all the things that I also wanted to share with you guys. And the things that I also did when I was, uh, uh, when I had my speaking examination. So do take note of those tips. And it's quite, um, I would say very simple, but then uh, it's so, um, it is going to give you a lot, lots of benefits, especially with the speaking examination. So that's it. Okay. Uh, just take note of the tips and try to get hold of this um, PowerPoint or this notes that uh, that is um, that will be given by Mother D later on. Okay, Mother, back to you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Thank you, Ati Gedj. Okay, so guys, yeah. <clears throat> by the way, uh, now that Ati Gedj has mentioned it, for those of you guys who would want to get a copy of the PowerPoint, there are, there are three simple steps, okay? After the live discussion here at IFNG, what you can do is you can like the Facebook page of IFNG, if you're not yet a member of IELTS Filipino Nurses Group, it's a free group for your IELTS preparation, okay? And then message the admins of IFNG so that they may add you on their group chats because the group chats are beneficial for your practice on the speaking, for sample examinations, for, for discussions like this one. And of course, I will be sending them the PDF version of this one. So they will be forwarding them to you later on. For my students, automatically, this will be for, forwarded to you guys, okay? All right, so <clears throat> where was I? Kaya pala minamadali na ako ni ate sa coaching ko. May intermission number pala siya dito. Yes. <laughs> she has an intermission number here. All right. So let's move on to the speaking part two. Okay. All right. So before that, what are the types of answers that you might be asked on the exam? Okay. So first things first, uwi ka na mama di. Ayan, konti na lang anak. Okay. Konti-konti tiis na lang anak. Alam mo namang ginagawa ko ang lahat para lang makapagpadala sa inyo ng mga kapatid mo. Kaya habang dinulustay mo yung mga pinapadala ko, isipin mo kung ilang pagkain ang tiniit kong hindi kainin. <laughs> <laughs> From the movie Anak by Vilma Santos and Claudine Barreto, right? Kung hindi mo ko kayang respetuhin bilang tao, respetuhin mo ko bilang ay, kung hindi mo ko kayang respetuhin bilang ina mo, respetuhin mo ko bilang tao. Kung ayaw mo sa akin, ayoko rin sa iyo. <laughs> That's how I would act in that movie, okay? I mean, Miss Vilma Santos is quite quite great, okay? When it comes to acting, di ba? Hindi ko siya kayang pantayan sa acting. So, ganun ako pag umarte, di ba? Nagmomodulate. Urgh. Oo, Bobby. Akala mo, Bobby, naiingit ako sa iyo. Oh, puro na lang ikaw, Bobby. Tapos sabi naman ni Bea, ah, ako? Bakit parang kasalanan ko? Bakit parang galit ka? <laughs> From the movie, Four Sisters and a Bakla. Right? <laughs> Anyari ba? Ba't may nagmomonolog na? <laughs> Minsan nga, Sir Manuel, magmonolog tayo. Ikaw si, uh, ikaw si, ano, ikaw si Teddy, ako si Bobby. <laughs> Gawin natin yun. <laughs> Puro na lang ikaw, 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 ikaw. Sabi naman ni, sabi naman ni Ate Bea, naalala mo ma, nung, ano, nung mga bata ka, may diba galing ka ng Divisory, ah? Tapos dumating ka, tapos meron ka mga dalang mga bags. Tapos sabi mo, huwag ka muna, huwag muna kaming pipili kasi nga si Teddy, si Teddy ang mauuna kasi nga siya ang panganay. Tapos naalala mo, umuwi ako kasi gutom na gutom ako. Tapos wala akong, alam mo yun, kinain ko yung nagkalit ka sa akin kasi kinain ko yung air. <laughs> Oh my gosh. May sapi na naman ako. Diyos ko. Ayan na naman. Nagsimula na naman siya. ba? Diba? From the movie Four Sisters and a Wedding. <laughs> Very fun, Sir Joseph. Thank you so much, June. <laughs> Ay, nako. Okay, let's continue. All right. Moving on. <clears throat> What are the types of answers on the task one, okay? You might be asked yes and no questions, okay? And of course, why, right? Do you think that it would be beneficial for people to study early? Yes or no, right? Agree or disagree questions? Do you agree 
or disagree that students should learn early, right? So if that's the question, you can uh, paraphrase it by saying, yes, I concur. Absolutely. There you go. Direct experience. What is your experience about this one? What can you say about this one? Your direct preference or direct idea? So these are the only things that you will be asked on the part one of the examination. All right. So moving on. Oh, by the way, it's back. It's back. It's back. It's back. It's Bakla. Okay. So guys, I am very happy to announce to you guys that Elite Ops is back, a program designed to make the basic test takers become operational, intermediate, or advanced. I remember this clearly. I think that was the second week or first week of February. We are uh, opened Elite Ops, okay? Elite Ops or Elite Operational, the program uh, for the students, okay? of Elite Intellect 9, okay? So guys, right now, the good news about this one is the 20 students who enrolled on our Elite Ops program has already passed their examination last week and two weeks ago. So now we are already opening Elite Ops to our students if you would want to avail of Elite Ops, okay? So sir, what is Elite Ops, okay? Do you see yourself as a beginner with your IELTS preparation? Okay, Elite Ops is a program designed to make the beginners to become advanced on their IELTS preparation. This is a limited review with no expiration, unlimited one-on-one -on -one coaching on all the subtests, listening, reading, writing, speaking, free compilation books, handouts, and materials, unlimited mobile and computer-delivered mock examination, unlimited one-on-one -on -one coaching with the master lecturer, moi, and of course, our coaches, free one-on-one -on -one sessions in grammar, vocabulary, and pronunciation. The difference between Elite Ops and Elite Focus, guys, is that Elite Focus is already for students who are intermediate, okay? The goal of Elite Focus is for us to make them advanced. Whereas for elite ops, if you are admittedly weak when it comes to your, or beginner when it comes to your IELTS ideas, capacity, then elite ops is for you. Okay, so we will be accepting 15 students only for this elite ops batch. Okay, so enroll now. Okay, there is an exclusive IFNG discount for elite ops. So pay only 4,999 pesos instead of 7,999. That is 3,000 pesos discount if you would avail of elite ops. Now, if you are going to be enrolling as a group of three and above, pay only 3,999 instead of 7,999 per student. So you're going to be getting 4,000 pesos discount. So the only thing that you have to do if you're going to be enrolling as a group is to choose one representative to enroll for your group. Okay? So if you would want to avail of Elite Ops, our code for this one is Elite Ops. That's O-P-Z. O-P-Z, okay? Elite Ops. You may find us on Facebook. That's Elite Intellect 9.0. Or you may contact us on WhatsApp, okay? And of course, our mobile number. Or you may scan this QR code later on for our Facebook page, okay? Or you may look at the chat box right there at Zoom. The link of Elite Intellect 9 is there. And of course, at the comment section of our live on Facebook, Mom Genji Jimenez and Sir Kael Jelogael has sent the link of Elite Intellect 9. Just type Elite Ops. Don't miss the 3,000 pesos discount or 4,000 pesos discount and be a part of the 15 students who will embark on a journey on the elite uh, the elite ops way okay because believe me the 20 students last february i can remember them quickly those those students you, you are seeing on our facebook wall right now at elite intellect those are the students who are a part of elite ops and i'm proud to say and happy to say that most of them got a 7.5 and above when it comes to their speaking okay so see you guys in class very very soon for those of you who would want to be a part of elite ops click the link right now on the comment section or on the chat box here at zoom and i'll see you in class very soon my children okay so let's move on Pero wala na anniversary promo. Tapos na po yung anniversary promo. Last week pa. <laughs> so, elite ops na po tayo ngayon. Okay, so let's continue. <clears throat> let's talk about the techniques for the IELTS speaking task 2. Also known as the longest 2 minutes of your life. <laughs> This is true. This is true. The task 2 is like the longest 2 minutes of your life, right? I mean, two minutes can go and pass by like a swish, right? I mean, if you're waiting for two minutes, it's a click and then it's already two minutes. But then again, on the IELTS, it's a completely different story, right? The two minutes was like the longest time because you're already talking for the longest time. And yet, you're just talking for one minute and 30 seconds, okay? So 
this evening or this afternoon, I will be teaching you techniques that you may apply for the speaking part two of your IELTS examination. Okay, so what should you do? What I always tell my students is for you guys to tell a story rather than worrying about your time or the bullet points. <laughs> really. Because some of the students, they worry too much if they're already on the two minutes time. They worry too much if they have answered all the bullet points. Basically, what I would want you guys to remember here is to focus on telling a story about the question and the details rather than focusing if you're at one minute and 30 seconds, one minute and 35 seconds. Right. Because if you're focusing on your time, believe me, you will get confused. You're, you will not be able to come up with responses. You will not be able to come up with direct responses for the question. So I'd rather you focus on telling a story rather than the time or rather than the bullet points, okay? Avoid overrated introductions, okay? Overrated intros are effective way back in 2009, 2010, 2011, 12, 13. But now it's already 2022. So overrated introductions tend to become cliche okay to the ears of your examiner okay it's so cliche for them when they hear these okay so sir what are overrated intros okay here are examples of common overrated intros mm. i was asked to talk about sino pa nga ba ang inutusan na magsalita <laughs> diba the topic i was asked to talk about kaninong topic pa nga ba yan diba i will talk about who else would be talking about it Right? When I saw the question card, I felt tingling sensation down there. I mean, come on, guys. Okay? You should not be saying these. Okay? Because basically, okay, overrated intros are, what do you call this, already abused in the ears of your examiner. So if you're saying these, there's a tendency for you to sound memorized. Right? It sounds like you're memorizing your response or you're, you're, you're just buying yourself some time to think of your answers on the part two. So try to avoid overrated answers on the exam. Okay? So some people say, when I saw the question card, I felt a burning sensation down my viva. Right? So why? Diba? The question card is not asking you how you felt when you saw it. Right? The question card is asking you how you felt about the topic, not how you felt when you saw the question card. So please do not do this, okay, on the exam, all right? Because it's too obvious that you're just buying yourself some time to think on the exam, okay? All right, what else? The best way to open your part two is to make a quick background statement about the topic, okay? So let's say the general topic is about entrepreneurship, okay, or businessmen, right? So you can say, Entrepreneurs have developed with their sagacity over time. A person that I am inclined when it comes to business is, okay, again, let's say the general topic is about entrepreneurship or business, right? Entrepreneurs have developed with their sagacity over time. A person that I am inclined with when it comes to business is, so look at that, it's already there, right? You're about to transition from the introduction towards the bullet, the first bullet point, okay? So that's what you should, that's what you should do, okay? When you are making a background statement about the exam, it's way better than saying, when I saw the question card, I felt a chilling sensation down my spine. Yung mga ganyan, di ba? Meron ka pa lang, tawag dito, scoliosis, di ba? And of course, do not forget to outline, okay? Guys, believe me, examiners are known to get the question card away from you. Okay, so the best way to do it is for you to outline on the exam. You will be given a piece of paper and a pencil and you will be asked by your exam. You'll be given one minute by your examiner to prepare. Okay, so you may do that. Okay, you may prepare. All right, so let's take a look. Okay, let's say this is the question. Describe a story you remember. <laughs> okay, describe a story you remember, you remember, so you remembered it too much. <laughs> Describe a story you remember someone told you, okay? You should say what the story is about, who told you the story, why you remember it, and how you feel about it, okay? Wait, let me just get my iPad and let me show you how to outline, okay? I will be including this on the handout later on. Don't you worry, guys, okay? All right, so when I outline, I actually ask my students to separate details, Okay, so let me try to share my iPad screen to you guys. Okay, hold on.
Oh, di ba? Gagamit-gamit ka ng iPad. Di ka naman marunong gumamit, Joseph. Ano to? Okay, here we go. <clears throat> All right. So again, describe a story you remember. Uh, you remember someone told you. Okay? You should say what the story is about, who told you the story, and how you felt about it. Okay? So when you are making an outline, guys, this is what I would want you to do. Okay? Let me share screen. All right. So first order of business when you are making an outline is to visually separate the details. Okay. So what I tell my students is to draw an X. Okay. Not your X. Because if you're going to draw an X, it looks like that. But if you're going to draw your X, it looks like this one. Right. Uh, who can relate when you're drawing your X? It looks like <laughs> that one right here. Okay. So what I always tell my students when they are outlining is for them to draw an X to visually separate or across to visually separate the idea. Okay? So here's what you should do. All right. So first things first, let's draw an X. Okay. And then next one, guys, is I want you to write down numbers. Okay? One, Two, three, four. Okay, there you go. Numbers one, two, three, and four. At the topmost part of the X, you're going to draw the general topic. Okay. I remember to meet with someone in Shara Brunei in 2009. Yeah, that's good too. Okay, so what's the general topic? Okay, it is a story. Somebody told me that I remember vividly Okay, there you go. The first question is, okay, the first question is who what the story is about. So I'm going to be writing down here what is it about? Okay, and then second bullet point is who told you the story? So who related to me? Okay, third question is why you remember it? Okay, it is memorable because... Okay, and then the last question, guys, is how you felt about it, okay? So I felt motivated, okay? So on the exam, since you will be given one minute to do this, to prepare, approximately you will be taking, uh, you will be taking uh, 30 seconds to write quick notes like this one, okay? So you may actually write down specifics, okay? If you still have time. Okay, so my specifics of this one is, story. Uh, the story is about my friend, Joanna and her rags to riches life. Okay. <clears throat> Who told me this one? It is Joanna herself. All right. It is memorable because, okay, it is memorable because I was able to amass. valuable lessons okay there we go and then i felt motivated because okay just write down because all right there you go so these are the things that you should be doing okay when you are outlining on the exam please make sure that you have this of an outline just remember on the topmost part is the general topic of the question okay all right there we go so what the story is about who related to me it is memorable. I, uh, it is memorable because, okay, and of course, I felt motivated because if you're not going to outline, what if the examiner takes the question card away from you? So it's virtually humanly impossible for us to memorize those questions, right? Within one minute, okay. All right. So what else? <clears throat> Next one, guys. 
follow these steps for task two. Okay. So what are the steps, Mama D, that you're going to be giving me? Step one. Okay. Make a background statement about the topic. Okay. And then you smoothly transition from, from the intro towards the first bullet point. Okay. Let's say that one. Stories could serve as a, a stories could serve as a guidance for people. Well, one particular story that I have heard before is about my friend is about the life of my friend Joanna. Okay, so look at that. I made a background statement first before I went to the first bullet point. And then step two. Talk about the first bullet point somehow, okay? Not too long, okay? But not too short because there's a danger that when you talk for way too long on the first bullet point, it's already two minutes and you're still here, okay? Step three, talk about the second bullet point somehow too, like the length of your first bullet point. Talk about the third bullet point longer. So you may tell a, a short story here, okay? You may tell a short story. Like let's say our outline before. It is memorable because... It is memorable because... <clears throat> It is quite memorable for me in a way that I was able to amass valuable lessons. I still remember it uh, clearly during that time, Joanna and I were sitting at our university chapel and she told me the things that she has underwent when it comes to her life, how she was a poor person and suddenly she became one of the richest person in our area. So I practically felt happy for her at that time in a way that it was quite inspiring. And it brought me a lot of different types of realizations about the life that I have with which I can have to be thankful. Okay, so look at that. So you can tell a short story on that one. And then step five, talk about the last bullet point. Okay, longest. Tell a long story here. You must remember, guys, that the last bullet point is the most important bullet point of all. Okay, it is the most important bullet point of all. Okay, so you better be there when your one minute and 30 seconds is over or when you're two minutes before the two minutes time. Okay, you have to talk the longest here on your last bullet point because that is the most important bullet point of all. Now, I heard some students say, Sir Joseph, um, is it true that we're not required to answer all the bullet points of the question? Practically, there's no, there's no specific. Um, thing that states on the grading criteria that you have to answer all the bullet points. But then again, if you're not going to answer them, what more can you say? How will you be able to reach two minutes, right? If you're not going to answer all the four bullet points of the question, how will you be able to reach two minutes, okay? So I recommend for the students to answer all the bullet points so as to ensure that you're going to make your two minutes effortless, okay? So to succeed on your task two, do not speak fast, okay? You have to take your time. Again, you have two minutes to talk on the part two. Paraphrase the bullet points. Do not just repeat the question. Try to paraphrase it as much as you can. Do not skip bullet points because some students, they tend to do this and the examiner sometimes gets confused. Like you're talking about your part one, uh, your bullet point one, and then you skip to part to bullet point four, and then you went back to bullet point two, and then you went back to bullet point four, and then you went back again to bullet point three. That's not organized, okay? Your examiner might get practically confused if that is your technique, okay? Answer all the bullet points. This is to ensure that you reach your two minutes effortlessly, okay? Arrange them chronologically. That's why I taught you how to number your outlines right there. Never go back to a bullet point, okay? Now, there was this technique before. If you run out of time, say another thing. Do not say another thing, okay? Stick to one central topic. Like let's say you're talking about a book, right? The, the book that you love is Fifty Shades of Grey, okay? And then you, you still have, let's say, one minute to talk. Another book that I love is uh, 28 Shades of Blue, by Clint Joseph Tyler. Because I heard, when I read this, so don't do that. Because basically you have to focus on one central topic. The IELTS is very much particular when it comes to focusing to one central topic only. Okay? So don't do that on the exam. Okay? And just keep on talking. Like what Dory said, right? In Finding Nemo, just keep swimming, just keep swimming here. Just keep talking, just keep talking until your examiner interrupts you okay super awesome explanation sir thank you so much rika my dear okay guys on the exam you have to keep on talking until the examiner says thank you that is the end of your two minutes to talk okay you have to keep on talking don't 
destroy your part two potential by saying, yeah, so that's it. Or, so that's what I can say about the topic. And you're still at one minute and 15 seconds. Okay? So guys, try to talk until the examiner interrupts you. Stay away from the word, yeah, that's it. Okay? Sana alam ko to dati when I first took it. Oh, don't worry, Jan. So, um, you have to remember the Lord has a purpose. Okay? The Lord has a purpose while you're here right now is for you to know this. Okay? All right. So, yeah. On the exam, guys, don't beat around the bush. Answer directly. Be academic. On the part to keep on talking until the examiner interrupts you. Answer chronologically. Answer all the bullet points. Tell a short story. Tell a long story. And that can guarantee a 7.5 and above on your speaking examination. All right? Okay, guys. So, before we end this, the most important technique is the Lord directs the steps of the godly. He delights in every detail of their lives. Though they stumble, they will never fall. fall. The Lord holds them by hand. Okay? You have to remember, if you're a person with faith, no matter what you do, the Lord will be leading you. Okay? So who knows? Maybe you're here right now watching this video accidentally because the Lord was already working on your life for you to know details on the IELTS examination. So guys, keep the faith, my children, okay? Nothing is ever impossible with faith. This is from the book of Psalms chapter 37, 23, uh, 23 to 4. So what do you what what to do if you're not really familiar with the topic as you can really relate to it. So what you can do is you can you may tell them your idea about it. Okay. If you cannot relate, um, it's okay for you not to be able to relate on it, but you just tell them your idea. Unfortunately, I do not have an extensive knowledge about this one, but if I'm going to be basing it on what I know, what I can say is okay, there you go. So Guys, let's just pray for those of you who has attended our live lecture for tonight, okay? Heavenly Father, we'd like to thank you, Lord God, for another opportunity to share your words with the students who are watching right now, as well as, of course, to teach them on their IELTS preparation. My Father, I am praying for the students who are watching right now. Lord, you know the will of their hearts, my Lord God. Guide them towards their path to success on the IELTS examination. My Father, I am praying for the admins of IFNG, the people who are making this possible. Lord, guide them and bless them always. Protect them because they are helping a lot of students when it comes to their IELTS preparation. My Father, I pray for the institutions who are teaching the students here at IFNG, Lord God. Lord, thank you so much for the lives of these institutions. And my Lord, thank you for the students that you have guided towards the path of Elite Intellect 9 in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, guys. All righty. Okay, so guys, if you would want to avail our, uh, if you would want to avail our uh, elite ops program, which is beginners to advance, guys, then of course you may message us on our Facebook page. Again, let me just flash uh, the screen uh, for the Facebook page of Elite Intellect 9, okay? So you may find us, just search Elite Intellect 9 on Facebook. You may scan this QR code or you may message us on our WhatsApp or click the link that's there on your chat box and on the comment section that was sent to you by Mom. Mom Genji and Sir Kael Jello Kael. Okay, so guys, I'll see you in our next discussion next week before I return the floor, the ceiling, and the wall to Sir Manuel. This is your Mama Dragon sending my love day for the Philippines. I'll see you guys next week, Friday, 9 p.m. PhD, live again here at IFNG for your follow up and part three techniques on the speaking examination. Sir Manuel, back to you. Hello. Hi. Isang todo na ma, isang todo na to. Isang todo na nga. to. Sagad na to anak. Ano ka ba naman? All right. <laughs> All right. Anyway, thank you so much for enlightening us with your broad knowledge of the English language. Thank you so much, Mother Dragon. And we hope to see you again next time. Charot! <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.